How's it going everybody, Ben from Much of Pokemon here. In this video, I will be opening a Charizard Ultra Premium Collection and a 151 Ultra Premium Collection in a versus battle. Pretty sure this is the biggest versus battle I've ever done. So without further ado, let's get into it. I think I'm gonna open the the um, 151 box first since it is larger just to get it off the table. And this is gonna be great. Man, I'm uploading this as my birthday special, even though my birthday was a couple of days ago. Um, I didn't want to break the my upload schedule. So here we are, and I'm really excited for this opening. I had this planned for a really long time, and I thought my birthday would be the perfect time to pull it off, if, if at any time, right? So here we are. Um, this one doesn't feel as premium as the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, though, I do have to admit. The presentation of the promos, though, as you sure, I've, I've opened this before on the channel, which was very successful, um, is top-notch, though. It's way better than, than the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, in my opinion, even though the materials don't feel nearly as, as premium. We have the Metal Card, which is stuck, curiously enough. Okay, here we are. Luckily, you don't have to be careful with these metal cards, obviously. Let me take the booster packs of this one out and just show off what we got from this one. I will be counting the the um, promos towards the main the main price, but I'm just going to show this off since I've done it in, a, in the past. We have some dice right here. We have two markers, the poison and the burn. We also have this lovely Mew coin, which is really, really nice. And this booster box, which does seem on the small side, in my opinion. But there we go. And a a cool playmat, of course. And there we go. That's basically all you get from this from this Pokemon 151 Ultra Premium Collection. Let me just show off the promos right here. So we do have, of course, the Metal Card, which I showed off earlier. We do have this Mew. Wasn't sure at first. Now I'm really, really liking this card, and I like how quote-unquote, easily obtainable it is in English. You just have to buy the product or buy the promo. The promo by itself is really cheap, and here's the Mewtwo. Lovely, lovely stuff for this one. I don't actually know the value on, on these Mew cards. I do know the Charizards for the longest time. Speaking of Charizard, let me just get some things off the table so I can open this one up. I know the Charizard promos. We're sitting at like 30 euros, like for all three, for the longest time. I don't know how expensive they are nowadays, but I feel like the Charizard promos might be more expensive than the, the Mew promos and the Mewtwo. Well, it is Charizard, of course, and they're essentially three alternate arts. Right, have to get rid of this one too. And this one you open kind of oddly. So you open it like this, nice strong magnet, and then you open it like kind of backwards. Let me just pull this one out. Here is the playmat, which I once again won't unbox. I've done that in the past as well. I'll be sure to link some videos up here somewhere where I've opened these. Just show off this stuff. The coins, though, or the markers and the dice are actually metal in the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, which does feel way more premium than the ones from the 151. Here is our first stack of booster booster packs and also our acrylic v-star marker we do have some evolving skies again you know what happened last time i opened one of these don't think i'll be able to able to replicate that but i just wanted to throw it out there you know okay here we have the three promos won't be unboxing this one since i've done that in the past as well i'll be sure to show them on the screen up here if you haven't seen them already but they are very, very, very cool promos, in my opinion. Some of the best there are. Okay, and here we are. We have 16 packs on each side. And this is gonna take a while, so I suggest you just sit back, maybe get a cold or warm drink. And then just enjoy the show, I suppose. This is only gonna go one way. Go one way. Oh, the new way. I changed my accent there for a second. Um... The main thing is the seeding with 151. Last time I opened an Ultra Premium Collection, I actually had a Demigod pack. So I think it all depends on how, how the seeding is with Pokemon 151. That's what, what's going to change this. An off-centered code card. Never had that one before. All right. Opened one pack. It was Fusion Strike and we didn't get anything. Color me surprised. Fusion Strike not giving us anything. What else is new? What else is new? Here we have the Grimer. 
Luckily, I mean, we don't have to do card trick for 151. We could do it for Sword and Shield, which I'm probably going to do for the for the Evolving Skies pack, but that's it. Since we have so many packs we have to go through, there's just no way I can do it for, for each and every one. That would take so much time. Hey, oh boy. Let's just open Slust Origin because I have a feeling that Fusion Strike is just going to be a bummer and not going to give us anything. Okay, so as I've said, I've opened two of these Charizard Ultra Premium collections before. And both times were actually really good. The first time I opened was, I think, right around Christmas, two or three years ago. No, it must be two years ago. There you go, nothing in that one, unfortunately. White coat card. And I did pull, like, a few okay cards, nothing too crazy. But I think it was a fair opening, in my opinion. And then the second time around, though, the second time around, I pulled the Umbreon VMAX, the Moonbreon. The most expensive alternate art of the Sword and Shield era, and currently also a hot topic, since I think it's it's already way on its way to $1,000. I think it's sitting at like around $700, maybe $750. I haven't paid too much attention to it, since you know, I already have one and I'm not going to sell it. So, oh, here we go, Alakazam EX. We have the first pull on the Pokemon 151 side. Can I open another pack? Let's open one Astroradiance. This is also one reason why I do prefer the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. I mean, first of all, it's cheaper than the Pokemon 151 <laughs> Ultra Premium Collection. So that way it's already way better in my book. But also you get so much variety on, on packs or off packs. Here you just get 16 Pokemon 151 packs, which is okay if you do like Pokemon 151. It's an awesome set. Um, that's fine, but here you get so much variety, you can relive your memories of the Sword and Shield there, which wasn't that long ago, mind you. It wasn't that long ago. Alright, let's see what we can find in the Pokemon 151. So far, it is in the lead, although just slightly, but we'll see. We'll see. Dude, if we pull another Demi-God pack, that would be something, right? But as I said, it all depends on seeding, unless this is like a second-gen print which I don't know. Pretty sure there's like no way of knowing. Here we have a full art. Nice, a Venusaur full art. That's a second pull on the Scarlet or 151 era site. 151 premium collection site. There we go. Messing up all my words. This is just how excited I am to open these. What else do we have? Evolving Skies? Nope, we're gonna save that for last. Let's open the Vivid Voltage and Darkness Ablaze first. Because we only have one of each, and there aren't any really great cards in these. Um, the greatest card, the best card from Darkness of Blaze is the Charizard VMAX, I'm pretty sure. Which I've also pulled on the channel. Um, I haven't pulled the, the, whatchamacallit, the Rainbow Pikachu. But I have bought a Chinese version, so... No, nothing in Vivid Voltage. Yeah, that's, that's just how Vivid Voltage goes in, in my experience, at least. That's how Vivid Voltage goes, usually. And Fusion Strike. I'm not expecting to pull anything out of Fusion Strike on this one. Because Fusion Star, Fusion Strike is notorious for having horrible pull rates. As I'm pretty sure most people can... Can, um, confirm. Let's see, Electrike with a Pan Sage. Skarmory, very cool looking Toxicity. And a Talon Flame, non-holographic. You know what? That's fine. Here is the code card for that one. Energy also. Get rid of that one. I have so many energies. Man, you wouldn't even believe. Okay. Oh, I just opened two of the, the Sword and Shield packs. I wasn't even paying attention. I was just so in the moment. So we must open two 151 packs now. I was just so in the moment, you know, just getting caught up in it. All right. Nidoran female. We've got a ghastly, lovely illustrated Voltor. Snorlax sleeping as per usual. Let's see, Nido Queen right here, Venonat, and just a Marowak. That's fine though, that is fine. Oh, speaking of Pokemon 151, I do still have my Japanese booster box that I bought off Pokemon Center when they were made to order. And it's just sitting on a shelf right in front of me, so it's very tempting to just rip it open. But it's actually part of my Mew collection, so I'll probably keep it sealed. Although those booster boxes were recently reprinted again, 
and I saw a few boxes being sold for about $100, which is way lower than it was previously. So if you do want to pick up a box, now would probably be a good time. So far, it looks like we've hit a dry streak. Obviously, on the Sword and Shield side, we haven't gotten anything yet. So, you know what? I am not ready to be disappointed because we're gonna open a Brilliant Stars pack next. But then we're probably gonna pull a... or open a Fusion Strike, and then we're gonna pull an Alternate Art. Yeah, there you go. We are gonna pull an Alternate Art. Dude, imagine. Imagine if I open another Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, and I pull another Alternate Art. That'd be something, eh? That would be something. That'd be something for the history books, even. Oh, Flareon! Nice! The first hit on the Sword and Shield side. Color me impressed. Here we have a V-Star marker and the code card for that one. Alright, let's continue on with Pokemon 151. So far, it's still strongly, very, very strongly in the lead. But we'll see if we can't... If we can't put it even more into the lead with pulling a, I don't know, Demigod pack or any any special illustration rare, really. I'm still missing so many from Pokemon 151. The only one that I don't want to pull is the Alakazam. I've pulled that card like three times already. Two times in German and then one time in English. So there we go. Speaking of never pulling cards, I have... Still haven't pulled anything from Pontane Fates, but then again, I wasn't really opening. Oh, hang on. Right, there you go. I had to move the card up a bit because it was glaring. I haven't actually opened a special illustration rare from Pontane and Fates yet. I mean, I haven't opened any other than what I do on camera. That set is... I don't know. That set is super, super weird. I haven't had a set that bad since, well, Fusion Strike. Toxicity it technically counts as a pull, but let's be real. Who wants a holographic if you could have like a full art or anything? That's actually a change I really love about the Scarlet and Violet era. They basically made um, holographics guaranteed. Kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh did, I'm pretty sure, with um, with their modern sets. They haven't opened Yu-Gi-Oh in a really, really long time. But I think that's what they did. Let's see what we can pull in. Nidoran male. We've got an Abra. Goes well together with our Alakazam, a Lapras, Cycling Road, Cloyster, Clefable, and a Holographic Aerodactyl. So far, it seems like that this is about what you would expect from a Pokemon 151 collection. Horrible seeding, still glad we pulled at least one full art. Um, what else do I have on this pyre right here? Oh, right, I have Astro Radiance as well. It's open, it's open one of Astro Radiance. As I said, once again... Oh, hang on. Alright, I just had to clean off the empty packs off the table. But there we go, continuing on with Astro Radiance. And see what we can pull in here. Astro Radiance, I think I've said it a couple of times now, might actually be my favorite set of the Sword and Shield era. There are so many great cards in here. Also alternate arts, you know, the Dialga. Um, origin from Dialga, Origin from Palkia, both very, very cool cards. Um, the Dialga I actually pulled on the channel. I think that was my first alternate art I pulled on the channel back, way, way back in the day. Man, that's that must be like two years past now. Man, time really does fly, eh? Okay. Wonder when we'll get, or if we'll get a, a big pull in this opening. So far, so far the big pulls ain't happening. Doesn't look good. But we shall see. Maybe in this one, maybe there's a, maybe there's a demigod pack. No, that's not a demigod pack. But here is a special illustration rare. No, that's just a vile plume. Dude, imagine, imagine. I could have put that up as a short and people would have been impressed, eh? People would have been impressed. Okay. Well, let's see what they're right. Brilliant stars, of course. Really do like brilliant stars. Of course, you can pull the Charizard in here. Which I think that's another card that's currently getting kind of expensive. You know, a lot of Sword and Shield um, era alternate arts are getting pretty expensive recently. And I don't know if it's market manipulation or people have finally caught on that these are actually insane. Yo, a Honchcrow, finally we've got another pull. 
So far, though, this seems to be the worst Shower Salt Ultra Premium Collection I've ever opened. Man, okay. Last time I got so many pulls. Maybe that was even an error box, the one I opened last time. I've got so many pulls. But right now we only have like two and we only have a handful of packs left. But, you know, this is all for the fun of it anyways. All for the fun of it. Just one big opening for my birthday. And then we're back to normal business. You know, just buying singles, probably. And then just opening one booster box whenever a new set arrives, and then that's it. Which is basically what you should do, I advise you. Maybe not even open a booster box, personally. Maybe just buy the singles, you know, after half a year, you have to wait. Because otherwise they'd be too, too, um, whatchamacallit, too expensive. Vaporeon Holographic. Seems like seating for both of these boxes appears to be horrible. Um, I'm ready to be disappointed once again. Because we're going to open Fusion Strike next. Never pulled anything great. I think the greatest card I ever pulled from Fusion Strike might have actually been the Sandaconda alternate art. Which is insane to say. The Sandaconda alternate art, notorious for being the cheapest or one of the cheapest alternate arts. And that's the only good pull out of Fusion Strike. What did I say? What did I tell you? That's Fusion Strike for you. That's Fusion Strike. Also, very off-center cards for some reason. That's odd. Anyways, mustn't be deterred by that. Mustn't be deterred. We have so many packs still left to open. And that means a lot of chances to pull something great are still left. Like this Pokemon 151. I really do want to walk away with like one great card at least. Doesn't matter which side. Um, I think Pokemon 151 might have the better chances of... Of, of pulling a special illustration rare because the the whatchamacallit the alternate arts in the sword and shield era are really tough to pull at least most of them so i think that might be our best chance to pull something um let's open let's open lost origin now that one was really easy to open and usually if a pack is easy to open that means there is something great inside here right that means there is something great inside. Let's see. C dot. I can see something peeking out. Yo, a Santa Scorch, a trainer gallery card. That's what I'm talking about. And a Hisuian Electrode V. Coming in with the double pull. Coming in with the double pull there at the end. That's glaring. Can't put that over there. We have to put it like this. Okay, and this is basically the rest of the pack. I mean, you get the deal. Here's the code card, of course. There we go. Now we're caught up. I don't know if that is more than just a Venusaur. I don't know. I think Scarlet Invited or 151 might still be in the lead. So let me open this Astro Radiance. Should have opened that early. I was distracting me. I wasn't even paying attention on it on my screen right here. But here we are. We have finished the dry streak, at least, so that is very, very good. Let's see if we can continue it. Come on, back-to-back -back pulls, back-to-back -back pulls. One, two, one, two. Nope. Well, technically, that is a pull. Not a pull that you would technically want, though, since it is only a holographic. All right, I think I made the same mistake and just opened two Sword and Shield packs right back-to-back. -back. I was kind of in the moment again. You know, as I say... If you if you open a really really good card, you just have to open. You can't you can't pause. You have to keep opening packs until you don't pull anything, which will most likely be the very next pack. You pull a really big card, and then the next pack's not gonna have anything. Or you pull a really really big card, and then the next like hundred packs or something are not gonna have anything great in it. Dragon Air. That's just how it goes with these. That's just how it goes. That's just how it goes with Pokemon 151. At this point, I'm getting a little bit disappointed. I have to be honest. At this point, I'm getting a little bit disappointed. I mean, come on. We just have two pulls? Really? That seems a little, a little low. Okay, I have four packs on each side left once I've opened this Pokemon 151 pack right here. So let us do just that. Flip it around. We've got a Meowth. We've got an Execute. Clefairy, Machop, got a Dragonair, Seedra, Kabuto, no Demigod pack, 
No special illustration rare, but at least a golem. At least a golem. Hey, that is not bad. <laughs> debatable. Debatable, maybe. I don't know. I'm clinging on to anything I can at this point. I'm not even joking. I'm clinging on to anything I can at this point. And this is actually going to be tough. I don't know how much these two are. I think the Pokemon 151 side is still in the lead. Although I might be completely wrong. I might be completely wrong. I might be completely wrong. Okay, that's not how you open that pack, but there you go. That's what I did. Okay, I just had to check which way the, um, the whatchamacallit, the code cards are, so I do the card trick correctly for Evolving Sky, so I don't spoil it. Fortunately, I spoiled it there for myself. Yep. Yep, unfortunately, I did spoil it there for myself, but that is fine. Oh, here's Coco. You can see that a little bit better. There you go. Don't want to go too fast on these code cards so you can actually read them. Okay, it's down to Evolving Skies once again. This time around, we do not have an Umbreon pack art. This time around, no Umbreon pack art. Man. If we had an Umbreon pack art 100%, there would be a Moonbreon in there. 100%. All right, we've got Pidgey, Poliwhirl, Kakuna, Matata, got a Pinsir, Bill, got Golbat, we've got no Demigod pack, and we've got a special illustration. Nope, Nine Tails. Well, there's the Pults. Okay, so this is where they were hiding all along. Nine Tails. That's a lovely illustration, though. Definitely way better, or yeah, way better than the Golem. I like that one way better. Okay, Evolving Skies. Let's open the Duraludon VMAX first and save the Rayquaza for last, probably. Okay, Evolving Skies, Evolving Cries. Which is it gonna be? Which one is it gonna be? I'm definitely gonna keep one Evolving Skies for last, so I might have to change the, the order of packs. Alright, let me just open it very, very carefully. Very carefully. There we go. Alright. Don't want to spoil anything. Here is the code card. And then I'm going to do one, two, three to the front. And then I'm going to reveal this card, which is the energy. Fire energy. And then I'm going to turn it around. Stormy Mountains. That would be perfect to pull a Rayquaza alternate art, wouldn't it? Boldor. We've got a Nuzleaf. We've got a Rog and Roller. Rufflet. Oh, Nickit. Well, as soon as we see the reverse, it's the next card after that one. The next... Okay, here we go. The next one after the Flaffy. Which is it gonna be? It's gonna be an Arc to Wish. Okay. Ah, man. Evolving Sky... Well, that is a pull. It is a pull. So it's not... You're not going home empty handed. That's not what you want from Evolving Skies, though, unfortunately. That's not what you want to see from Evolving Skies. Man, okay. It's always such a hassle or such a... What should we call it? Such a roller coaster of emotions almost with Evolving Skies. It's, it's always so crazy. Because you never know what, what you might pull. Man, I would love to open another booster box of it, but there's just no way. No way. Not for these prices. The booster boxes are as expensive, if not more expensive, than the best cards you can pull. And there's no way you pull a... a whatchamacallit? A Moonbryon. Right? So, what's even the point? There, there's, there is no point of opening Evolving Skies. There is no point. The boxes are way too expensive. And it's not to say, like, yeah, you have to make your money back. No, that's not it. That, that's not it. They're way too expensive. You, you spent $700 or euros for a booster box, and then at best, you maybe pull, I don't know, realistically, you pull a full art, and that's it. So you're going to be really upset if you turn your 700 euros or dollars into like $50, not even that, $30. That's more realistic. And that sucks, and that's why opening Evolving Skies for current market prices is just not worth it. Even though it is an amazing set. It really is an amazing set. So many great cards in Evolving Skies. Swablu. Hopip. Got a Wubbuffet. Cutie Fly. And... Nope, just a Gorgeist. That's Evolving Christ for you. 
All right, let's open these last two 151 booster packs next. And then we'll open the last Evolving Skies pack. So far, no really big hit on either side. I think it all comes down to how much the Venusaur is and how much these two are. I think the 151 side might just slightly win, although I'm not too sure on that one. But we'll see. Maybe we can put it ahead with a with a special illustration wear in this one, right? Come on. Special illustration wear in this one. Or demi god pack. Right here. Nope. Still have chance for a special illustration rare. Oh, and there goes our chance. That's just a holographic. That's just a holographic. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, okay. One last Pokemon 151 pack. Is there anything great in this one? Or is it just gonna be more of, of the same? We, we will see. Actually, let me reveal the code card right away. There you go. And I think this is the energy. Let me peek. Yep, that is the energy. Okay. Let me just get rid of these two immediately. And there we go. Porygon. Electabuzz. We've got a Coughing. We've got a Tangela. Gloom. Lefable. I skipped a card. Ductrio. Zubat. We've got a Diglett. And we've got a Holographic Machamp. Well, that is 151 seating. As per usual was horrible for this box. The first one I opened was way better than this one. But that's just how it goes. Let me just put it like this, I suppose. Yeah, like this. Okay. And we have the last Evolving Skies pack right here. Man, is there gonna be anything in this? I don't know. I don't think so. But we shall see. We shall see. Let me just open it very, very carefully as to not spoil anything. Here we go. Okay, I think I can take the cards out safely now. There we are. And then here is the code card. There you go. And then we do one, two, three to the front. Right here is the energy card. I'm going to put it right there. So as soon as we see the energy, the card after it is going to be our last pull. So let's see Crystal Cave. Aliotoad. Got a cutie fly and Eevee looking at the Rayquaza. Love that illustration. That illustration is great. That illustration is nice. Woo Bat. We've got our Chin Chow. Also a lovely illustration. We have our fighting energy. And we have a Drumpa. And that is Evolving Cries. <laughs> Man, okay. Well. Not as, as insane an opening as I hoped and thought it would be. This is all I've ended up with from this opening. Kind of, kind of sad, honestly. If I do have to, I do have to admit it, it's a little bit sad. I was expecting at least one special illustration wear or maybe an alternate art. Still, pulling a trainer gallery card, though, is really, really nice. So I'm happy about that one. And <laughs> do I even have to say anything about the Pokemon 151 side? Um, I expected nothing, but I'm still disappointed. Well, it was still fun to open those two big boxes, and that marks off a video that I wanted to do for a kind of a long time now, so that is a great accomplishment in itself. Okay, so I completely forgot to do the whole point of the versus battle, which is the price comparison and finding out which side won. Don't know why I completely forgot that, but here we are. Also with the promos, so I will count the promos towards the total price. And I think with the Charizard promos, I think this site would have easy, easily won. Although I might be surprised. Um, the prices are down here somewhere, so... Well, I knew this site would win, or what a surprising victory. I have to cover both sites here. But anyways, I guess it does it for this video. If you found some enjoyment in this video, then a like would be greatly appreciated. Maybe even consider subscribing for more awesome content in the future. And... Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button. Click this one first, then check out this video. Other than that, there are a lot of videos in the description below as well. And I hope we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace. Take care.